Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary of the world. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I, will not, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort, confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. There were two processions that day when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. From the east, there was one with a donkey. From the west, one with a war horse. One rode in meekness and humility. The other marched in military might and power. One had shouts of Hosanna, meaning save us, save us now. The other, shouts of silence, and obedience. One carried symbols of peace and hope, the other symbols of victory and intimidation. The story and staging of Palm Sunday and Jesus' entry into Jerusalem is packed full of symbolism and story. It's easy to miss what it all means. But for Jesus and other Jews, it was the beginning of the week of Passover the most sacred week of the Jewish year. It was a time when Jews traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate their people's liberation from the empire of Egypt. Remember the story of Moses saying to the Pharaoh, let my people go. Jews would gather in Jerusalem that week to celebrate that story, their freedom from slavery. But what we often don't hear is that during this festival of freedom, the government would also show up. On one side of the city, the governor, Pontius Pilate, would always have a procession into town. It was the empire's procession. Alongside Pilate would be soldiers and drums, weapons and armor. This was the Roman military marching into town. Their one goal, intimidate and subdue. They were there to make sure nothing got out of control because when a community of people within your empire has a celebration about being freed from an earlier empire, well, you have to remind the people that you are still the one in charge. It's to make sure there isn't any trouble. Sure, have your festival about freedom, but don't get any ideas. It was keeping peace through a show of force. And now at the same time, on the other side of town, Jesus comes riding into the city on a donkey. It was a counter procession, an alternate parade. Roman Empire on one side, Jesus on the other. The kingdom of Rome and the kingdom of God. 
At first glance, Jesus' procession can feel a bit like a victory parade for the World Series champions down Main Street of their hometown. Crowds gather and shout and cheer just to catch a glimpse of the glory and celebration of the celebrities returned home. But consider the words of the prophet Zechariah, written 500 years earlier. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be broken, and he shall command peace to the nations. Pilate enters on a war horse, but Jesus on a donkey. The Jews gathered in Jerusalem would have caught the symbolism. They knew Zechariah's image of a king riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. The meek and humble king of Zechariah who would bring peace. And the message from Jesus is clear. He is the one commanding true peace, not through intimidation or force. This alternate parade, this counter-procession is intentional. It's thought out. It's political theater. Jesus is sending a message. This is Colin Kaepernick kneeling on the football field during the national anthem. This is women in Congress all dressed in white at the State of the Union. This is the person standing in front of tanks at Tiananmen Square. While Pontius Pilate is driving a tank into Jerusalem, Jesus is riding in on a tractor. Political theater indeed. He knows what he's doing. In a way, like the prophet Isaiah, Jesus asks, who will contend with me? Who will struggle alongside me? And in response, as people of faith, we pray it will be us, that we will be the ones to boldly declare, let us stand together. We pray that we will walk with and stand with Jesus as best we can for as long as we can, while knowing that in the end, we all flee to a safe distance. This confrontation, the collision of these opposing forces is inevitable. Like the prophet Isaiah says, Jesus has set his face like flint for Jerusalem. He will walk into the heart of the beast, the Roman Empire, to bring peace in love for the world, placing his own body in the gears of this monstrous machine. Nothing is going to stop this now. He won't back down. It's a tragic story, but it's also a good story. A story about God's unflinching commitment to be with us. And good stories are worth repeating. Listen.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he sat at the table. A woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this, this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely I not. Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then they had sung the hymn. They went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took them with Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet... 
not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi! And kissed him. And they lay hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but then he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving of death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below the, in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I did not know or understand what you were talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. 
They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many, see, see how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barbarus was in the prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barbarus for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him! Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barbarus for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with, with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who had stood facing him saw that in this way he had breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger of Joseph and Salome. These used to be uh, people who followed him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. 
and there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together with the church around the world, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. It's printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. with 
the whole people in God, Jesus Christ Jesus. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of gratitude, as we transition through the first week of the season of spring, may we all be reminded and choose to be grateful for the new beginnings that spring brings us in physical and tangible forms that we see and appreciate in the shifting weather, budding ecosystems, and abundant sunshine. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, as many different areas in the world are dealing with significant conflict, be with all those who have been displaced, injured, and and in need of extra support. Help global leaders find a way to come to a resolution quickly, to end the violence, destruction, and move past deep-rooted hatred. Let the leaders be calm enough to be creative enough to find a new pathway to peace. Lord, in your mercy. Comforting and healing God. We pray for those that are sick and in need of healing, including Ruth Sunstead Angeline, Janice Keza, Paul Kleinvalter, and Roberta Morse and Dolores Gefson. We also pray for those who are especially isolated at this time, including Janice Helgson, Valoy Massander, and Richard Olson. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom and guidance, be with all the leaders of the church throughout the world in all its forms. For pastors, decents, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, and all the lay ministry leaders, for congregations that complete difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Consoling God, be with the grieving family of Wendy Schultz, daughter of Cora Schultz. Additionally, we remember the saints who have gone before us, who we name in our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share God's peace with one another. Good morning. We are so glad you are with us for worship as we begin Holy Week. I'm Pastor Pam Fikensher, and leading worship with me this morning is Pastor Jonathan Davis, Nathan Proctor at the organ, along with the St. John's Chorale, and our assisting ministers, our readers from our youth program, the Rudzer family, Elliot Davis, Pippa Younger, and Lucy Younger. Welcome as well if you are joining us via KYMN or through our live stream this morning. This morning's broadcast on the radio is given by Sharon Bishop in memory of her mother. If you would like to sponsor or dedicate a broadcast, please contact our church office. There are dates available in the future. In the pews, we invite you to sign the welcome folders on the outside ends that are marked St. John's. If you are new to St. John's, you can request any of our communications there or let us know who you are. 
A reminder as we take our offering as Minnesota Food Share Month draws to a close all of our special Lenten offerings. Anything designated for Lent uh, will go to the Community Action Center here in Northfield. Between services this morning, we have an adult forum here in this space with an update from the Community Action Center from Anita Reichner to tell us about their expanded work here in Rice County. We invite you to join us for the full observation of Holy Week. Check out the schedule in our bulletin for services on Thursday and Friday, as well as Easter morning. And as we prepare here for Easter, we still have opportunities to sponsor lilies and Easter flowers to adorn our space on Easter morning. You can make those orders in the Commons today in order for dedications to be in our Easter bulletin. We invite you to join us in that celebration next Sunday, and we continue now with our offering.
Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of the meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The feast is ready. All are welcome. Come and eat.
You are the body of Christ. Go now, fed and forgiven, to be good news for God's world. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your Im immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed to the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. 